Yeah, welcome to another video here by Red Pill Tokyo, giving you, giving you the straight goods, man, from the uh, smallest cafe, the tiniest cafe in Shibuya, Tokyo. Yeah, today's topic is uh, guys playing women's sports. <laughs> and uh, I did a, a, at least I'll just introduce you to myself, like I, uh, throughout my life I've, right from a very, very uh, young age, uh, basically I played uh, sports every day and like even now, although you know I'm in my, uh, I'm uh, 50, 52 years old now and then uh, the, uh, my involvement in sports is still on a daily basis but it, it tends to be more like the things uh, that I want with my body now, uh, which is like, uh, like even this morning I just went for a quick four four kilometer walk uh, before I came to work and then uh, while I'm at work I probably do uh, every day four or five hundred uh, push-ups or other kinds of calisthenics even just when I have the shop open here so that's kind of like level of sports that I do right now but uh, throughout my uh, younger younger life uh, from from like uh, grade one onward I was playing uh, com you know like competitive sports like uh, uh, every day and uh, as I touched upon in like other videos uh, uh, my son who goes to school here uh, my daughter too like I, I, I really want them involved with sports in school I'm pretty convinced uh, that uh, I'm a former teacher and I'm pretty convinced if those uh, if my kids were I were to homeschool my kids for like one year I could have them at uh, I mean my son is in uh, grade now grade uh, what would be equivalent in uh, the English world grade 8 right now. I'm pretty sure in one year I could have him near grade 11 or grade 12. Uh, well, maybe that's a stretch because there's still mental development happening uh, as you go older and there's the other things factor into it. But I'm pretty convinced on a knowledge basis when one year you could, you could cram what they do in six, seven years into one year pretty easily. And uh, like I've been teaching my daughter how to read uh, just through reading a storybook every day for the last, uh, 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 I guess three months, and she's totally learning how to read. We do it, I do it in the morning and I do it at nighttime. So like one of the ones, that the reason I have them going to school is for two reasons, basically so they can play with their friends and they can play sports. And uh, so uh, in the uh, other video that I talked about, is like if you uh, have had enough of this woke culture right now, make sure that you have your kids in sports because like uh, uh, once they're involved in like super uh, competitive environments like that, like the, the woke kind of stuff has no, uh, uh, yeah, it just, you can't, you like it just sort of dissolves woke culture and I was uh, I, I this stuff I guess came up I was on a YouTube thing in my uh, bedroom this morning and uh, just preparing mentally for my day um, and uh, one of the videos came up with uh, uh, one of the uh, tennis pros out of uh, the 1980s that I was familiar with and uh, his name is John McEnroe and then he had uh, he had done an interview where they asked him, uh, they, I guess they'd ask him uh, how how good a player is uh, Serena Williams, and he said, oh, "Yeah, she's a really good player." And uh, I guess he was on NPR, and you know NPR, they're just trying to push this government woke, globalist woke agenda to like no ends. And they well, they asked him about uh, how she'd rank, and then. He, he said, well, yeah, she's a great player. She's a great woman's player. She's the best ever, but she'd be, if she was in the men's field, she'd be ranked, you know, 700, which is, you know. <laughs> and then he ended up, because I guess he'd written sort of some sort of book about four or five, six, maybe half a year ago. And he'd ended up on, uh, what's that guy, uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie, he used to have the one, the one on PBS where he did do, he basically interview globalist people for the globalist agenda. Anyhow, Charlie, uh, I forget now. And uh, he he was on the show on uh, American Network Television and they were, they were trying to egg uh, uh, John McEnroe on and, and then saying that like it was totally inappropriate for uh, uh, for him to say that she was the number 700 uh, player in the world but he wouldn't move off it and I was like yeah 
it's totally so like what my proposal is is that uh yeah why don't they just get rid of uh i think like really what wolf really needs right now is about uh two or three years of reality and uh that would be to uh just combine everything <laughs> yeah combine women's sports with uh men's sports uh for the next two years in tennis okay and uh yeah the world's just gonna it's basically gonna i mean well, what, what am i saying like i, I don't want to because i don't want to take I don't want to take the uh, the money that these professional women's players uh, away from them because they're working hard too. But you know, I mean, if they're gonna, if, if we had like one human classification, they're gonna get wiped out. So, and I, and I saw this. Uh, I don't know how it comes. All this stuff comes across my feet right now because I guess I'm pretty. Uh, I like like it's just so stupid. This sports agenda and woke. It's like unbelievably like it's so I can't even doesn't even make any sense to me and uh, I guess uh, the uh, the uh, swimmer there uh, Leah Thomas the man who's got long the man who has long hair and competes with the women uh, in the NCAA he as a man he was ranked 462 which I think is actually pretty impressive like to me that's really really impressive in the NCAA I don't know how many swimmers there are and to be uh, ranked like 462 in in uh, the American uh, college age men uh, who are competitively swimming I think is something to be really proud about uh, and then it said it, uh, that was like on the left side of the uh, the picture and then on I guess it was a mean someone put, probably put a mean no I forget exactly where it was right now but they put a meme up on, on Twitter and uh, and then on the right side of the meme was uh, uh, women's Leah Thomas, like number one uh, woman swimmer in the NCAA. So I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to like I, I propose this little thing here to be a little bit silly. I guess is that if we got rid of the classifications, right, that it would just be so uncompetitive for these uh, for these women uh, who are who are competitive and. And this comes back to like my original topic here with my kids in school. I, whether it's my son, is obviously my son is like way better at sports than my daughter. Like, but she's good at the little like she's. Uh, what does she do right now? Uh, she's really good at dancing. She's uh, in our apartment in the back. She's got a little dance studio that she goes to. And then uh, she's really good at hula hoop and skipping rope and stuff like that she's really 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 good at it and then i always do my best to like encourage her to always be like uh doing exercise not just for competitive reasons that's a great reason right but like so that you can enjoy your life like I, another thing came up on the jordan peterson interview said uh, one of the best ways to keep your cognitive abilities and i didn't know this until i saw that this morning is uh exercise so Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. I just think it's great. So like as long as my if my kids are involved in sort of and I like my son particularly to the field that competition of men's sports and uh, My daughter really hasn't sort of entered like a competitive uh, uh, sports world uh, like my son has so like But I'm really glad that they could both do sports and stuff like that. And I'm still like uh, uh, You know every day like I'm trying to even at this stage in my life like trying to make sports a big uh, part of my life and uh, Yeah, when you have that beautiful body and uh, it's in really good It's in really good shape. You're gonna have a beautiful body and a beautiful mind, you know, like it's all this They like uh, the older I get like I can see myself just turning into a yogi uh, The rest of my life. So yeah, anyway, uh, just some uh, uh, musings from uh, Red Pill Tokyo here giving you the straight goods from the uh, smallest cafe the tiniest cafe in Shibuya Tokyo thank you very much